The world is normally divided into six climate zones. These zones depend on several factors. The first main influence is temperature. If a country lies near the equator, it tends to be hot. But if it's near the poles, it's normally colder. A country can also have a cold climate if it's very mountainous, with most of its land sitting well above sea level. Wind direction can also influence climate. If winds are being blown from a hot area, they will raise temperatures. The opposite is also true. If winds have been blown from cold areas, they will lower temperatures. Closeness to the sea is also important in deciding a country's climate. That's because the sea cannot warm up or cool down as much as land. So coastal areas don't really experience extremes in temperature. But areas and countries well away from the influences of the sea can get very hot and very cold. Not every part of the world has the same seasons either. We have four seasons here in Scotland – summer, winter, autumn and spring. However, some countries only have two seasons – a wet season and a dry season. Whilst countries on the equator can have the same temperature and weather all the year round. There are six different climate zones. These are temperate, where winters are cold and summers are mild. Polar, where it's very cold and dry all year round. Arid, where it stays dry and hot. Tropical, where it stays hot and wet all of the year. Mediterranean, where the winters are mild and the summers hot and dry. Mountainous, where it stays very cold throughout the year. Why don't you join me on a quick tour of the globe to find out more about climate zones around the world? Come on, it shouldn't take long. The first climate zone we're visiting is temperate. Temperate climates don't have extremes of temperature or rainfall. It's neither too warm or too cold, too wet or too dry. Some would say a temperate climate is just about ideal. But it can be quite changeable. One day it can be raining, the next it may be sunny. It's also very difficult to forecast. And guess what? Scotland's weather is temperate. But let's go and find ourselves another climate zone. It suddenly got much colder and that's because we're in a polar climate. Polar climates stay very cold and dry throughout the year. They include the tundra and ice cap climates where temperatures stay below freezing all the time. Parts of Canada, Russia, Greenland, Alaska and the Antarctic all have polar climates. The lowest temperature ever recorded was at Vostok in the Antarctic, where a bone chilling minus 88 degrees Celsius was once measured. Now that's super cold, so let's keep moving. That's more like it, but I wish I'd brought my sunglasses. That's because we're in an arid climate, and arid climates are normally hot and also very dry, so they have a severe lack of water. Deserts fall into this category, so the Sahara Desert, along with Saudi Arabia and large parts of Iran and Iraq, all have arid climates. You do occasionally get some cactus growing, but that's enough of the sunshine for now. It feels quite warm to me, but don't we get a great view from up here? Now, countries close to the equator, where the weather is hot and humid, have a tropical climate. In tropical climates, during the wet season, it can rain very heavily almost every day. But at the same time, temperatures stay above 25 degrees Celsius, even in the winter. Tropical climates include countries with a monsoon season, like India and Sri Lanka, and also countries with tropical rainforests, like Brazil, parts of Africa and Indonesia. Sometimes the main climate zones are actually broken down into sub-climate zones. So, for instance, within the tropical climate zone, we can also have savanna, rainforest and monsoon climate zones. I'm really enjoying this trip. Two more zones to go. Now, this is what I call ideal holiday weather. 
a Mediterranean climate produces hot, dry summers and cooler, wetter winters. This type of climate obviously occurs in regions around the Mediterranean Sea, like Italy, Spain and Greece, but you can also get a Mediterranean-style climate in coastal parts of California, South Africa and southern parts of Australia. The hot and dry summers and normally frost-free winters make this climate not only ideal for holidays, but also for the growing of citrus fruits. But enough about holidays, it's time to get some exercise. I was told there was going to be a chairlift for this one. Look where we are. A mountain climate usually refers to countries with high lands. Consequently, the climate is normally cold with occasional snow. Alpine climates consisting of glaciers, high-level pasture land and rare plant life are also included in this climate zone. Other famous mountain climates around the world include the Rocky Mountains, the Andes, the Himalayas and the Tibetan Plateau. But that's enough globe-trotting for one day. Let's talk about how these climate zones might change in the future. Scientists believe that the world's climate is changing as a result of the huge quantities of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases that we're pumping into the Earth's atmosphere. This has led to increasingly unpredictable and extreme weather, so as the Earth heats up in the years ahead, we may find that the climate in each of these zones could change too. For instance, the polar regions may experience milder weather, causing the ice caps and permafrost to melt. Some scientists also believe that climate change may make the Amazon region much drier, resulting in the large-scale destruction of tropical rainforest. Only time will tell how dramatic these changes are likely to be, but climate change is happening, and our understanding of climate around the world may have to change too. <laughs> 